Hello and welcome to IT Chronicles 10 in Tech. We're here at Knowledge 17. My name is Carlos Casanova. We're here with Shane uh, Carlson, my co-host, and Bill Choppa from Ericent. Thank Hello. you for uh, joining us. Thank you, it's my pleasure. So Bill, you know, we've heard the Ericent name for, for a while now, but uh, tell us a little bit about you know, what you guys do and you know, uh, how you're helping your clients uh, succeed. Great. Ericent uh, provides full cradle-to-grave IT asset management solutions. So this includes the discovery portion of normalization across all your platforms, and providing not just normalization of your software and hardware information, but the measurement of the usage of those applications. That's what we like to call your database of reality. Right. Then on the other side of the world is what we call lifecycle, which is your IT asset management of your software and hardware assets, which would include your purchase orders, your invoices, your contracts, and normalizing that data. We call that your database of truth. Okay. And then finally, we compare the two by providing what we call license reconciliation. And so we then compare what do I own, calculate your product use rights, and then compare that to discovery. Hmm. Now, with our partnership with ServiceNow, we provide the integration points to provide this normalized results to ServiceNow to create consistent and predictable hardware and software models and that was those reconciliation uh, calculation results. Cool, and you said it works across uh, different pl platforms, so the Unix platforms, the Windows platforms, the whole bit? Correct, everything from your Windows to your Unix, your Solaris, your mobile devices, right? Because we provide mobility management solutions as well. And that's a, sometimes a very hard thing to do because organizations are very siloed. Yeah, absolutely. They have multiple discovery solutions, they have multiple CMDBs, sometimes they'll have ServiceNow and other CMDBs. We provide services to large organizations worldwide, and they're very siloed from country to country, organization to organization, mergers and acquisitions. So we unify all that data. You know, uh, organizations may use our native discovery process, but we don't limit to that. Okay. We'll say sometimes you only have SCCM, we only allow you to use SCCM data, or you only can use Tivoli or ServiceNow's discovery data. We bring in that data, process it against our normalization database, and then provide consistent normalized results. So, so you can take federated data from just about any uh, configuration or asset management source and, and bring that in and utilize that in your product. Absolutely. How does that help, you think, enable your customers? Um, you know, f many people you walk into, you find they have many, many different sources of truth, mm -hmm. uh, in quotations. <laughs> Believe the um, truth. You know, what, yeah. what, what does that do for you when you walk into a federated environment like that? How can you help drive value very quickly with those kinds of customers? Well, that's a great question. So we also provide a service called our ITpedia. And this contains over 8 million hardware and software models, or catalog items is what we refer to them as. Sure. And this contains the consistent non-discoverable attributes, mm -hmm. such as for software, the UNSPC categorization information, yeah. the life cycle data, start of life, the end of life, and the support data. For hardware uh, objects, you're talking about the height, the width, the weight, the form factor data yeah. that the CMDB folks love. Those yeah. CI information is great. So the value we're providing is because we are also recording the product ID and SKU information, we bring that back that inconsistent procurement data. Right. Uh, many customers will find that they'll have line items that say maintenance yeah. or John's office license. Well, what does that mean? Yeah. Right. By matching the product ID to our ITpedia, we now know, oh, this is an Office 365 E3 license, provide that into the calculations, feed that back into ServiceNow or other uh, solutions so that they have that consistent data and basically immediately. Right. So I know, I mean, I know one thing and having, having worked in the space, you know, one of the big challenges when you start getting into that, into that discussion, especially from an automated perspective, you know, the, the device could have the same components on mm -hmm. it, but really be a different, you know, like so, you know, a suite versus the four parts of a suite, they're all, they're all yes. there. Uh, so, how do you, you know, that's a challenge, right? Yes. To, to detect the difference between they look the same, but they're actually treated from an asset perspective very differently. So how do you do that? Is, this, is that because in, the, um, in your repository you have both and you can detect it that way? How, do, how does that play out? That's a really great question and that's a common issue in organizations. So we attack that issue from a two-fold perspective. Firstly, from the discovery perspective, we detect that the suite's there right. and the components of the suite is there, right? right? And then from the procurement perspective, we can then see how you bought it. Right. And then if you bought it at the suite level, if you bought the individual products, and because we are seeing that normalized data and then have what's called a use right 
reconciliation process between the two. Because it's one thing to know that the product line says Office 365 E3, well, what does that mean from the discovery perspective? Exactly. Yeah, what are, the, what are they actually entitled a, to? Exactly. It's a square peg in a round hole. Yeah. Yeah. So from our discovery knowledge base and our ITpedia knowledge base, with behind the scenes, we have a third knowledge base called our entitlements reconciliation knowledge base okay. that then compares this line item translates to this range of versions. Maybe it's an upgrade with downgrade rights. Right. Maybe it's a range of versions that you allow. Right. Maybe it's version independent. Right, yeah. because you just have to be active in your SA. Yeah. So it those that part of the knowledge base makes that reconciliation calculation happen. Yeah. So, so do you guys measure uh, the accuracy of the data before you come into the environment versus after the environment? What kinds of improvements do you guys typically see with a lot of the clients you walk into? That's another great question. The key to success is knowing what you have first. Right. Yeah. If I don't know what I have, I can't even know. I can't even start the process. Right. Right. So the value that we provide is if you already have a third tar party tool, immediately we're going to normalize that data and feed it back in that consistent information. If you're using our native process, we'll immediately tell you everything you have. And it's not just hardware and software from the OS perspective, but from the network device perspective. Mm -hmm. Many organizations from an IT asset management process have issues paying maintenance for Cisco routers yep. that they didn't even know are still on the network anymore. <laughs> And they just pay the maintenance when they oh, get yeah. it. That, that, that happens right a lot. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, that so, a lot. because we separate discovery from lifecycle, you can then track. I'm paying maintenance on these Cisco routers, for example, right. and then our discovery process says, well, which ones are actually still on the network? Right. Stop paying maintenance immediately. ROI. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so is that a big uh, kind of uh, catalyst that you guys use to convince people of the value of the product? Is that payback on maintenance and uh, you know things that should have been end of life or sunsetted uh, that may have extended maintenance costs around them? I mean, what is what is kind of the big uh, uh, the big payoff for the clients who are entering the space besides the accuracy of their right. data? So the big payoff is reclamation, yeah. right? Whether it's reclaiming on disconnected devices that should no longer be uh, paid for, but it's also retirement of underutilized applications. Yep. What makes our solution very unique is most organizations will say, I measure usage. Yep. Usage to many products or organizations mm -hmm. is open time and launch count. Yep. Better than nothing, but not very useful. Right. So the approach we took in our design was let's actually measure the interactive level of the end users in the machine, okay. in the applications. So for example, we count the keystrokes and mouse clicks that happen within the application in the foreground time. Because I can launch Visio for 10,000 hours and 10,000 times and yeah. never need the full license. Yeah. I'm gonna be launching it from emails, yeah, right. right? So by knowing I'm interacting with it, we can then set that level set, say, hey, if you did 10,000 keystrokes, launched it 5,000 times in three months, you can keep it. If you didn't, we'll have a workflow to say, we're gonna uninstall it, we're gonna reclaim it, give us a reason why we can't. Right. And there's another ROI that uh, customers find. And just a handful of applications, it could be concurrent licensing, it could be uh, one-off products like Project, Visio, and so forth. Many organizations, they just have it and then they forget about it. Yeah. By reclaiming those licenses, what we even use the, the bad word in the industry is true down. Yeah. Yeah. Microsoft doesn't want to hear the word true no, down. No, no, no. But no, no software vendor does. Exactly, <laughs> so. but we can provide so. the specifics to say, we are going to turn down, and here's the evidence of why we're going to do it. Excellent. Well, we appreciate you joining us here today, and uh, thank you very much for your time, and uh, wish you much success here at, at ServiceNow and in the future. Great. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you.